Hi, I'm Beth Billings from Around the Table Yarns, and tonight we are working on the Fast Forward Sock from Kate Atherley, and it is a toe-up sock done in DK weight. Just ran outside with my dog and my glasses are all wet, so there's spots before my eyes. Um, we started the sock with the toe. It's a toe-up pattern. And Kate came on to show us how, which was really awesome, and to talk about the pattern. And um, we are now at the point of having to create the short row gusset heel. So um, I'm going to change my video to the camera. And so at the point where we are, um, the top of the sock is being worked with no increases on each side. And the bottom of the sock from this point up is being worked with increases that are coming out. And it looks like I haven't put my marker in, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my marker in. I'm on the last row of the increases and the 26 stitches or the however many stitches for your foot should be marked inside of these little wings that are coming out for our gusset. So a gusset is a triangular insertion of fabric. So we're actually building this triangular insertion of fabric here. And the way that we're, we're doing that is when we got to, when we talked about this last time, when we got to a measurement, things are falling out at me. So if our foot, I had a pencil a minute ago. If our foot is shaped like this with toes, three, four, and a big one. And the length of our foot is from here to here. When we cast on the toe, we had to work in this direction for an unknown number of inches. And the, the way that you figure out how many inches, it's the, the amount for your size. So let's say it was 2.5 for your size. I'm making that number up. But let's say you were supposed to work till 2.5 from the end. So we cast on the toe and we're building the sock in this direction and we're going straight and we're supposed to stop at a certain measurement from the end. So you have to know the length of your foot. You have to know so here's your measurement from the end and we have to subtract whatever this number is. So this is A, we'll call this B. And you have to subtract A from the total. So that'll be C. So A, sorry, C minus A equals B. So you need to know the total length of your foot and this A is given in the pattern. So the length of your foot minus the measurement in the, it's, it's under the section in the pattern that's called the foot. And in it, she says, knit even until the sock from tip of the toe measures this number for your size short of the length of the foot. So the way that you find what 
what you're supposed to measure is by knowing the length of your foot and subtracting this number, and then that's how long you make it. For mine, it was five inches. So my, my C minus A equals B was five inches. So when I got to five inches of, of my knitting, here, I began increasing only on one side. So the way the pattern tells you to do this, she tells you to arrange your stitches so they're on the first, so that they're divided in half, essentially. And you do the increases on one half. So I did it magic loop. I've seen many people in the group doing it in double points. You can also do it on two circulars. Um, you can also do it by marking which half of the stitches are the front or which half are the, which half are the bottom of the foot. Um, on a small circular. So all of those ways are valid. So then you're increasing at the beginning of the round and marking here. So I'm gonna go ahead and slip in my markers, which I hadn't done. because I have done eight of my nine increases. And I just wanted to demonstrate on the video the increase because it is a make one right and then a make one left. So the increases happen before the marker and they happen at the beginning of however many stitches you've increased. So the first time you do it, you come to this side and you make one and then you place the marker. And then when you come back again, you do a round in between and then you make another one and knit one and then slip the marker. And we're gonna do that again also on this side. So it's happening on both sides. But you can see that these stitches are sort of winging out to the right and they're also winging out to the left and that is the gusset for our heel turn. So now I'm gonna do one more increase and I'm gonna make my stitch to the right. So I'm going to come in from behind. So to make one right, I take my left needle and I come in from behind the strand between the two stitches. I like to pull it forward and hold it with my finger. So you can see I'm holding that loose and then go in. So again, to get into that stitch, sometimes I find it a little tricky and I like to pull it forward, hold it with my finger behind and then knit into the front of that stitch. So to make one right, the left needle comes from behind and the right needle knits into the front of the stitch. Now I should have nine stitches to my marker. And then I would be working across the foot stitches, which is the same as the other side, the same number. So again, I have eight stitches remaining there. So to do the increases for the gusset, these are happening at the ends of these sections, the beginning and then the end of the bottom of the foot section. 
So I'm going to go all the way to the end. And then my left needle, I'm going to put in from the front under the strand between the needles like that. And I'm going to pick it up so it's on the left needle. And then I'm going to put my right needle into the back of that strand and knit it normally. And that will lean to the left. And that's how I make one left. All right, so now I'm gonna just work around and come back and we'll be ready to start our short row gusset heel. Okay, so now I have completed my increases and I have worked an extra round of plain knitting. So I'm ready to start the bottom of my sock. And now I'm going to begin the short row gusset heel. And this work is going to happen um, primarily between the markers now. And so I'm not going to be turning my work to the other side for a while. So you want to get nice and comfy here on the bottom of the foot. So we're going to be doing this with a German short row. And um, we're going to be working back and forth in stockinette with the German short row. So the first thing we do is we set up um, to do our short row shaping. So you're gonna begin the, the stitches that are outside of the markers, and we're not gonna come back to them for a while. We're gonna stay inside of the markers. So we're gonna knit, she tells you to knit to the first marker and slip it, work to the second marker and stop. I have the tiniest little cat who's outside of the door of my room. <laughs> She's scrat he's scratching to get in. And it sounds like there's a monster out there. And it's just a little bug. Okay. So I've worked to the second marker. I'm not slipping it. I turn my work. The marker is now on the right hand side and I'm facing the purl side of the fabric. I want to be in the light here. So when you do a German short row, you want to make sure that the working yarn is forward when you are ready to do the first step. And the first step is to slip the first stitch, the stitch that you just worked, that the working yarn is attached to. You slip that stitch purlwise onto the right needle and take the working yarn over the top of that stitch, over that needle. And in this case, I wanna bring it back around to purl. So I'm gonna take it up, it lengthens the sides of that stitch. So it looks like there are two stitches on the needle. And then I'm gonna bring the yarn back around to the front ready to purl. I'll show you that again in a minute. Okay, so now we've turned and what you can see is that the double stitch has two legs on each side and it's kind of knotted at the top and it's just inside of the marker. So it looks visibly doubled and that's why it's got given the abbreviation of DS which stands for double stitch. So I've purled two away from it and now I'm gonna purl all the way 
to the other side of the marker section And when I get to the other side, I'm going to do another German short row turn. But this time I'm doing it from the purl side to the knit side and it looks a little different. So I knit the stitch before the marker and turn. When you turn from the purl side to the knit side, the working yarn is behind the needles. So the first thing you have to do is move it to the front and then you slip your stitch. Now you pull up on that stitch a little bit. It elongates the base of the stitch and creates the double stitch again. And now I don't need to bring the yarn forward because I'm going to knit. So now I just resume knitting. So I'll do a couple and then show you what that double stitch looks like. So it looks very similar to the stitch on the other side. It has two legs. On each side and it looks knotted at the top. Sorry, that's a little blurry, but you can see the two legs here clearly. And then it's sort of crossed or knotted at the top. Now, the pattern tells you to work to one stitch before the marker. And I just wanna point out that one stitch before the marker is the last not double stitch stitch. <laughs> That's like a double negative. So I'm working back to the other side and one stitch before the marker is a regular stitch. So here's my marker, here's a double stitch. So there's one double stitch and then a regular stitch. So you don't work the double stitch, but you work all the way up to it. So we're counting the double stitch as the one stitch before the marker and turn. Because we're turning from a knit side to a purl side, the yarn is already in front. So you slip the stitch, pull the yarn up, the working yarn up to create the double stitch and bring it back forward to purl. And we're gonna purl back over to the last stitch before the double stitch on the other side. So nicely, these rows are gonna get shorter and shorter as you go. But here I am, and I just wanna show you that the last stitch before the double stitch is very close to the double stitch. So it can you have to kind of pull it apart, pull it away from the double stitch, but you can see that there's one more stitch to work and then the double stitch and then the marker. So again, one stitch before the marker is a double stitch. So I'm gonna purl that last one that's not a double stitch and turn. Again, the yarn needs to be forward. It needs to be in front of the work before you slip it. And then you can pull up a little bit to create the double stitch legs. And then you can just knit the next stitch. Now I have two double stitches, one, two, after the marker. I'm gonna continue doing that until I have nine double stitches total on one side and eight on the other side. So I'm gonna continue doing it until I'm on the very last turn. 
So while I'm moving along, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and now I'm on my, I've done six um, of my decreases. We were just talking a little bit about doing the short rows. And I said this this morning with the group that came into the store, and that is short rows are best done in one sitting. And the reason that I say that is that they're very hard to, like, if you're keeping track of what you're doing while you're doing the short rows, um, you're very unlikely to get it wrong. So if you're really focused and paying attention to the short rows that you're doing and you continued it one, two, three, four, five, six, you're counting and making sure that you're on track. Um, you're very unlikely to get it wrong. But if you uh, put it down in the middle, it's really hard to see where you are in the knitting. It's hard to count and find your place again. Um, usually short rows are small sections that can be completed within the space of several minutes. And so I really recommend... Um, trying to do them. And actually one of our participants just said not being talked to, not being disrupted by anything else, not listening to the television or a book on tape, but just working on the short rows and focusing on them and you'll get through them and be done and you won't have made a mistake. So, um, I have very few words of wisdom to share but that is one that has come back to bite me when I ignore it. And it has come back to uh, prove valuable every time I do pay attention to it. So this is my eighth short row on this side. So I'm getting up to the end. Okay, so I'm about to work the last stitch on the purl side before my last double stitch. And on this side, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the beginning. Mm -hmm wrong page of my last so I finished that and now I turn so I'm facing so this is um oh, there's no page numbers under our short row gusset heel instructions in on the second page it says you'll be facing the right side of your work so i'm facing the right side of my work and i have a different number of turns on this side than on this side i've completed one more turn so one more double stitch is on the left side of my work than the right side of my work. And so I'm gonna make that even now. So I'm gonna bring my yarn forward and make my last double stitch. So now I have the same number of double stitches. And then it tells me I'm setting up the heel flap. So the instructions tell you to work across the center stitches that are not double stitches. And then you're going to come to the end of those. And now you're going to work the double stitches. So look at the double stitches. They look like there's two legs, but they're connected with that knot at the top. So to work that stitch, you're going to just put your left, sorry, your right needle tip into it as though you were knitting two together. So we are resolving these double stitches by working both legs together. The knot goes to the back and the front looks smooth.
So just look at that again. I'm going into the double stitch as though I were knitting two together. And it creates what looks like a single stitch or is a single stitch. So I'm gonna work all the way to the last double stitch before the marker. I'm gonna resolve all of these double stitches until I get to one before the marker. Okay, and this is where we're gonna start decreasing. So you can see the bulging part of my heel here. It's hard to see it completely because it's being held straight across my needle tip. And now I'm going to do an SKP. So for those of you following along at home, an SKP stands for slip one, knit one, and pass the slip stitch over. To do that, I'm gonna slip the stitch knit wise. So my needle tip goes in from the left side as though to knit the stitch, and I slip it to the right needle. I can remove my marker, I knit the next stitch and then I pass the double stitch. So you're picking up both legs of the double stitch. That is the stitch that you're passing over and it makes this lovely decrease right here. It's a little hard to see it in mine because it's so invisible. And once you've done that decrease, we're going to turn the work with no double stitch. So it's just a plain turn. And as we all know, that creates a little bit of a gap. And the gap <laughs> is what we know we're going to do the decreases across just like we do in other kinds of socks. So I'm gonna work back. Now, sorry, you slip that first stitch purl wise and we're gonna work back. I have a friend talking to me here in the room with me and he's very demanding. And now we're gonna work back again to one stitch before this marker. So we're gonna go all the way back to the other side. So here's all of those resolved double stitches. They look a little bit lumpy, but they're very smooth and they look very smooth from the right side of the fabric. I'm gonna work all the way back over to my first marker. And now I hit the double stitches again. So this is the last single stitch. And again, to resolve them, this time we're purling them, but we purl under both legs. So you can see that that looks a little bit like I'm purling two together. And you're gonna work each one of those as, a, as though it were a purl two together. So you might have to pull in a little bit. Again, if I have to pull this, the needles apart, see how much distance there are between my needles? That's so I'm making the stitch bigger so it's easier for me to get through smoothly. So go in and you can, you can use a little force to pull them apart to make it easier to make those stitches. You're the boss. So it's a little tricksy to find that right spot on these purled stitches, but you can do it. And we go all the way to one stitch before the marker. So there's my last one. Now on this end, instead of an SKP, we're gonna do a purl two together. So to make that easy, I'm gonna slip this stitch temporarily to my right needle and drop my marker and then slip that stitch back onto the left needle. Now you can see this is where my marker was. I'm gonna purl the double stitch together with the first stitch after the marker. And then turn. 
And that's what it looks like. It's a really smooth decrease. Okay, so now, I have begun the heel flap or I'm, a, I'm about to begin the heel flap. So um, somebody asked if you wanted to do this in a contrasting color, when would you change colors? And I would change it when you start working inside of the markers and I would continue through the heel flap um, and until you start working back in the round. So all of this that's that's been built up underneath, you can see this turn would be in a contrasting color. And then the next part of this is the slip stitch heel. So I'm just gonna cover the, the two rows of the heel flap for everybody, and then we're gonna be done. So the slip stitch heel, again happens, you turn and you're working back across the heel stitches and as we come to the gaps at the end, we're gonna jump over the gap and do an SKP here. And when we come back on this side, we're gonna jump over the gap and do a purl two together for these two stitches. But when you start each row, you're gonna start with the first stitch and slip it purlwise. On the right side, you slip the first stitch purlwise and knit the second stitch. And then slip one and then knit one. So every other stitch is slipped, starting with the first one across the row. So it's a very rhythmic repeat. And if you've worked one, just look down and that means you're gonna slip one, slip one, work one, slip one, knit one slip one, knit one. I can feel the gap coming, it's right there. Slip one, knit one, slip one. And I'm not going to knit that last one because I work this decrease as an SKP. So I slip this knit wise, knit the next stitch over the gap, pass the slip stitch over, and turn. Slip this stitch purl wise and purl back to the one stitch before the gap on the other side. Now she gives actual counts of how many stitches, but it works out to one stitch before the gap. So you can trust me. I want to point out when I get back over there that I have decreased a stitch so when I get to the end of these stitches and I work to one stitch before the gap. This is the stitch that I slipped initially. So when I get to it, I'm gonna purl that stitch together and now it's moved over a little. So when I slip it this time, is that right? it still line up? I guess it does line up. And then you're working, so the right side row is a slip one, knit one, and the wrong side row is a slip the first stitch only and then purl all the rest of them back. And there's my decrease. 
and there's my turn. And now I'm gonna slip that first stitch and then purl all. So on the purl side, on the wrong side of the fabric, you do not slip anything after the first stitch. All right, so you keep doing that until you have one stitch left of each gusset. And we won't get rid of those gusset stitches until we resume working in the round. Does anybody have any questions? So that's the beginning of my heel. And now you'll see that there are ribbed slip stitch stitches starting to form a reinforced and a padded heel. So we'll continue doing that until there's one stitch each. And the last two decreases happen in the first round after you resume working in the round. So my goal for everybody for next month is to be back in the round and ready for the bind off in Russian lace. Um, but I will continue to get my heel flap done and um, give you that, give you the next month to get that all done. All right, if there's no questions, I'm gonna stop the recording. I hope everybody is enjoying the pattern and is enjoying the yarn.